As the very first person who got me into pharmacy, he's sitting in the front row, his name is Andrew Clark, and I think one of the first things I ever said to him is, Andrew, you've got to be first choice at what you do. And if the customer can't perceive that you're first or second in that area, you're nowhere. Uh, Will, of course, has taken it to a new level in terms of calling it EST and being best at what you do. But what is really interesting is that if you're going to occupy the ground in terms of service and solutions, there's several issues. From a retail perspective, as Will has said much better than me, it's about knowing your business and your categories and your customers very well and making each of the parts customers' first choice. The place they choose first because of their perception of range, skills, stock, the whole environment, the customer experience, but because of the deep understanding of becoming the customer, getting under their skin, shopping the way they do thinking, and that is the core of the research we do in Feel Good. Without the absolute understanding that the primary reason that you're in business is to get and keep more satisfied customers, from which your sales and profit will flow, we never get there because once we don't have to understand our customers, our difficulties begin. <coughs> In each of the feel-good repertoire of nine categories, the outcome average sale potential is over $120 because it's about execution. It's about how to deliver the information, learning the skill to feel confident about making the right recommendations, knowing what you want the cut knowing what the customer would want to buy and what you want the customer to buy. So what do you focus on? But significantly add the potential to cross-sell, like stress with smoking weight for women, or very important key segments like women, or personal passions like quit smoking. Future categories need to add value to the customers and significantly add value to the business. Three more in the pipeline. As I will demonstrate later, there is no doubt that the system can make a significant impact on that hardest of all things and the main purpose of increasing numbers. Categories may differ and as Will said to you, you can't be all things to all people. If you focus on everything, you focus on nothing. So there is an enormous range within your health businesses of conditions and category options. Can you be all things to all people? No. Within the business of the business, as KPMG says, there are always going to be categories in which you can dominate. I'll show you some examples. Choose those. Certainly how you present needs to project the image of that business and the S position you want to occupy and deliver it to every customer every day. Point is, if you can't sell outcomes and solutions, all you have left is the price. And then you better watch out. Value and reasonable pricing is now considered entry level. It's entry level the same as smiling at the customers, knowing that there's nothing of a differentiator, it's an expectation. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that pharmacists delivering advice to customers hold the key to unlocking better customer health outcomes and the hidden cash cow in their pharmacy. We've only just launched Dispensary Loop it goes further than offering a laminated product name and asking people to, to offer some coenzyme Q10 with every statin script. There are about 80 tips, 70 products, I can't even remember that we've identified recommendations in the nine categories. Here's the thing, they're almost all in conventional medicine as opposed to complementary medicine. So there's an awful lot you can do. In the five-hour training session, one of the core activities involves careful scrutiny of all the advice and products, clear focus on what I like to call groupthink, so that we all know what we're doing, what we're saying, and why we're making the recommendation. There are 15 different dispensary flags, always relevant, and importantly, always low-hanging fruit. Offering quality solutions to customers in your key health categories to meet their health and wellness conditions is actually terribly exciting. It builds morale and is the business of the business, but you have to do it right. Make the decision if you're going to go by condition. 
find a way of editing solutions or giving more information if you don't want to have, have the solution. But you've got to speak to your customer in that language. And I'm well known for hating the term smoking cessation because I actually can't hear a customer saying, darling, you promised to cessate. And you haven't. You know, and they said, well, I wasn't going to cessate until you did, you know. Um, there really isn't time to put one's toes in the water, to have potential competitors as somebody has had writing to your staff to say they'll put you out of business. We don't need that. So we need to be on top of our S and we need to do it very well. Thank you, Will, for making such a compelling case for S. You know what they say, um, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it right. I mean, retailers, um, Bruce and I both love this, uh, will define themselves by the customers they serve right, rather than by the products they sell. Retailers will grow not by selling more stuff, but as one-stop purveyors of lifestyle needs. To get there, you really have to stick with it. And as my business partner Peter said, please tell them, he said, that set the strategy, start it's an incremental improvement, but please stay the course. Thank you very much.